Right, so welcome back to the channel. I hope you're good. I hope you're having a great day. On to today's video, we will be talking all about my newest series, The London Monarch, where I take a London-based side and put them into the MLS. If you'd like to watch, you can do live on Twitch. The link will be down in the description. I'm streaming every single day. You can also catch up on the podcast. It is the Dupe Scoop podcast. can be found the link in the description or on most popular podcast places. That's a lot of peas. You can play along at home as well. In the description, there is a link to the database. It has the database, the files for the logos, the kits, the 3D kits. It also has the opportunity to use the spreadsheet, which we'll surely reference later on how I try and keep my salary cap in place. The MLS is a scary place, but honest to God, once you get playing and once you get used to it, it is so much fun. So please, please go and give it a go. What I've done is I've loaded in. I'm going to show you exactly what we see and how I started this save. We'll fast forward to the end of where we are after two streams, and then we'll go from there. As you can see, the London Monarchs, we took the place of Charlotte FC. So anyone from Charlotte, I do apologize. But you can see that we play at Wembley, 90,000 seats. We only sell about 20,000, so we're not filling that right up. Um, we also uh, will not be entering until the 2022 season. The database starts in the 2021 season. It gives us a whole year to fill out the squad, fill out what we need to fill out. I'll tell you now, when you get into this game, you have nothing. You have no staff, no players, no nothing. Also, just a little homage to, to England and to Britain. Our training facilities is at St. George's Park in Burton-on-Trent, up the berth. As you can see, we have zero players in our best 11. It's going to be tough. And the expectation is very real. This is the expectation from Charlotte. This is, hasn't been risen, but they want us to spend the budget. They want us to become one of the most reputable teams in the US of A. And also, they want us to win that MLS Cup as much as we can. So there's, you know, they want us to do quite well. So here you go. Into the save. We've obviously done this before. We're over at, uh, on our Twitch. You can find the VODs and they may be even uploaded to the VOD uh, playlist. But this is what you see when you come into the game. It's simple. Nobody in the squad. These are just grayed out players that they film them with. We will not be able to use these players. And actually, something that's more scary zero staff you have the doctor already in place it's not somebody that you can hire or fire in football manager and also we have ourselves. that is it <laughs> that is our whole team available uh to kind of take us through the next few years as you can see we have quite a budget that is just to get over the fact that we have to fill a squad and we have to buy out people out of their contracts we also have more traveling than any other team so the, the, the money is high, but it doesn't really affect what we can because our reputation isn't great. So let's fast forward and see exactly where we are right now. I'll take you through all the ins, there aren't any outs, and how the season is going so far. A little spoiler, as you can see the screen, we have fast forwarded 18 months. So let's jump in and see some of the transfers so far. So the first person through the door was Brian McBride, my assistant coach. Yes, it's coach. We've changed all the language to American. We've changed the, the, it, the salary to yearly and we've changed it to dollars just to make us feel a little bit more kind of emerged into this into the game but brian mcbride has ties with london obviously played at fulham for four years he also is american so that's kind of the tie he is the assistant coach for the london monarchs he will now help us get staff get a technical director which is what i did and then let the technical director build that staff team i i love doing staff do not get me wrong i love doing staff but I am building a whole staff on its own. We will then upgrade the staff when we need to. But at the moment, I think the technical director did quite a good job. So as you can see, he's got everybody that we needed. He's maxed us out. We're a little bit short on the goalkeeper stopping and, and defending. But apart from that, he's done a great job. He's built a great team. And hopefully that will help us lead this team to glory. Right. Now the exciting part. I'm going to do this a little bit different. It's not in chronological order. But I'm going to tell you, probably one of the bigger signings we've done. In through the door, Mr. Timo Puki. He ain't finish. He's only 32, if you get me. Uh, a striker of great caliber. He is strong. He is quick. He can. He knows where the goal is. And I'll tell you something. I bet he scores a hat full of goals for us in the MLS. We're paying him £4 million a year. Only 689 of that comes out 
of our um, salary cap because he's classed as a designated player. If you are confused by the MLS rules, I'm more than happy to do a video telling you how to do the MLS, how to get around it. The English take, I'm sure there's some American YouTubers out there that can do it better than I can, but my take on it, and this is how I do it. But yes, Timo Puki in through the door, big salary, but it's because he's a designated player, only X amount comes off our salary cap. Let me show you another designated player. The man's been passed around more times than a parcel at a past the parcel party. Peas, peas, peas. But it's Kennedy with the peas. We've had to pay the peas to get him from Chelsea. Uh, 3.5 million. Again, a designated player. So he only has 600 odd thousand coming off of his contract uh, of our salary cap. We paid 1.8 million pounds for or dollars for him. But a good inverted winger can cut in from both sides. Um, strong, good attributes. He's, he's, he's going to do us wonders, in my opinion. And probably the most exciting one we're going to show you is up next. We've got in Adnan Yanazai. I know. Adnan Yanazai is our highest earner. The 27-year-old ex-Manchester United player who has come in and done quite well. We'll break it down shortly. But the attributes there scream to me not the same player that left Old Trafford back in 2017. But he's come over to London Monarchs. Um, we brought him in for 7.5 million from Real Sociedad. And I think he is going to do us wonders. So let me take you through a couple more players that may not be designated, but will play a massive role in this club. Mangala, ex-Manchester City, ex-Premier League winner. Let's not forget Mangala, six foot two, strong aggression, uh, strong, is good aggression, good determination, good physically, not so good technically, but for this league, I think he'll be absolutely fine. Only 377,000 a year we're paying him. So actually, it doesn't cost us too much. The salary cap um, doesn't get affected too much. And I'm happy with that signing. A very good centre-back. But who are we going to pair him with? It would not be an FM Doom save without a six foot four, 16 jumping reach, 16 heading centre-back. Um, I feel Rocco is going to be my near post header um, extraordinaire. Chilean, we brought him in from Elche. Um, half a million pound a year we're spending on him. Half a million pound out of that salary cap. Uh, it is looking... Like, he's going to be a very, very good defender. The problem is, he's a little bit slow. He is a little bit slow. But apart from that, um, his tackling's great. His marking's great. His heading's great. Positioning's good. And I think the positioning probably outweighs that acceleration. The fact that he's going to be in the right position, in my opinion. Uh, and he shouldn't cause too many issues. But we got some extras. Let's have a little look. So we picked up Nicholas. Nicholas is a very, very good player. Um, he came in from New York City. When you first join as a brand new side in the MLS, you get uh, a thing called expansion draft where every other team in the MLS puts together three players and they go, here you go. Um, we're happy to put these up for the expansion draft. And then I get five picks from all of those players. I could only pick one for, per side. So I couldn't have picked another New York City player. But Nicholas is somebody that I have seen before. No, he's a good player. And he's also tremendously cheap at one point uh, 151,000 pounds per year off the salary cap but he's a very good player he's going to do very well here and uh, he is that ball winning midfielder that's just strong quick and I just like him I like him a lot and he's done very well to start with so I'm excited to have him on board another one we picked up this one from Philadelphia Union just because it's Brett Shea uh, I've been informed that he used to be a wonder kid somewhere in one of the games um, unfortunately, as you can probably see now on the screen, he's a free agent. We put him to the waiver. Um, it just, I, he just was not good enough for us, unfortunately. Uh, but Brett Shea came. He, he had one game, played terribly, and unfortunately, we had to let him go. I do apologize, Brett. Another one would be Frankie Omea, uh from New York Red Bulls. Um, a very good attack midfielder. 13 passing, 12 technique, uh, 13 vision. He's that short. Low center of gravity, good with the ball at his feet, could can dribble, can shoot. I'm, I'm happy with him. I'm happy with him. Again, very low salary cap uh, impact. And again, all on that expansion draft. We also had the super draft. The super draft is where you get free picks every single year. It relates to where you finish in the table. So if you finish at the bottom of the table, you get a quick, an earlier pick. If you're a brand new side, you get the first pick. We had the first pick of that super draft. So basic, basically... The easiest way to explain this is every single side has a youth intake, so to speak, that goes into one big pool, kind of scout them all, and then it goes to the draft. 
So it doesn't matter how good they are, and they're not going to go straight to you. They will go into the draft. Um, and it that's kind of a brief explanation of what it is. Like I said, you get your picks. These are drafts. That, uh, these draft picks you can trade. I'm for one that's sort of the person that will trade them. I don't think you get great players. The other thing is I kind of went for one of the good, better players. However, I think I've got a bit of a dud here with Matt Martinez. Um, he's classed as a generational Adidas athlete, which means he doesn't affect our salary cap. Um, there's like a handful that get like almost sponsored by the league and the league pay for his, uh, don't pay for his wages, but doesn't affect our salary cap. So the only reason I bought him was on initial reports, he was quick, he had good work rate, and he could kind of finish. Um, but also at 5'10", he had kind of a good head in as well. Looking at him now, he's got low self-belief. I don't believe he'll go far at all. However, he might be somebody, because he has that Adidas uh, generational Adidas athlete tag, that we may be able to get rid of him some good value on uh on our you know from from somebody out there uh probably another one quite a good little pickup for us really was alvarez uh 19 year old mexican very highly rated in europe and was wanted by quite a lot of europe teams and for some strange reason la galaxy decided to put him up uh for waiver he passed the waiver we were because we're quite high up on the waiver list we get first refusal again Waiver list is where you are situated in the league. Because we're a new side, we're situated higher up the, the list. And it is kind of first come, first serve. We jumped on him. We've got him in. We are paying quite a lot of salary cap. We didn't actually put any money down for him. And potentially, we could sell him. We could trade him. We have a lot more value with him being with us than against us. Brazil is a massive hotbed of, of talent, young talent that's looking to uh, come to a league with quite a higher rep. The MLS has quite a high reputation um, and it gets seen by more people. So uh, Bissoli has decided to come over from uh, Atletico. Good young Brazilian. He's just very well-rounded. I wouldn't say he's going to set the world alight again with free determination. Probably not. Um, but he is available uh, with not taking a huge amount out of our salary cap. But also the fact that um, he may have some value later down the line. So that's probably the highlights of the team. Uh, oh, no, I forgot one. OGs of the stream uh, or the channel will know I'm a big fan of Dijan. We've had him uh, in previous saves a lot of the time. We had him at Forest Green. We had him um, in one of the network saves as well, I believe, back in the day. We used to be able to pick him up from Frankfurt um, and then obviously from Serbia as well. But a good little player. We managed to trade him for two of our picks coming up. In next year's draft plus an international slot again we could go deeper into the rules and regulations if you'd like me to please leave a comment if you do uh, i'm happy to talk nonsense about the mls and kind of give you a bit of a guide to it but i'm sure there's probably better candidates out there but dijan a uh, good strong powerful player uh only 22 again he will have some value in europe one day and i think if we can keep hold of him we've got him on contract for three more years he does take quite a lot out of our salary cap however I feel as he's not a designated player, he potentially will hold his value and somebody will come knocking for him sometime. So yeah, this is probably our best 11. Um, Dijan Puki, Yanazai and Kennedy are tremendous. That Doffo, actually we've not mentioned Doffo, but Doffo's a very good little player. 26-year-old uh, from Argentina. Likes to play a little bit higher at the pitch. We're playing him a little bit deeper at the moment. But again, look at his attributes. Very well-rounded. Um, he likes to look for that pass instead of trying to score. Um, it's also a left footer. Left footers are just so hard to come by. Uh, but he he kind of roams around on that centre midfielder attack. Does like to kind of um, occupy some spaces and he will go wide. We've got um, Nicholas in playing that ball winner, kind of giving that little bit of support to the back too. And we've got Escobar and Tolo. Tolo's a good little player um, from Cameroon. I believe he is also partially American as well. So that is... Uh, very, very good in this league because you are penalised on your slots for international players. But he's a good little player as well. Uh, good pace, that which I just like to have my pacey um, wing backs. Uh, he can cross as well, which is which is rare for wingers now, uh, wing backs nowadays. But yeah, we're looking uh, to play the four triple two. Nothing too expansive, to be honest. We're just trying to get the the balls in low because Pookie loves to get on the end of it. We're trying to work into the box and we're also playing at quite a high tempo. 
I believe with that front four, all kind of being from Europe and knowing the league and being actually very good quality, we have the ability to play at a higher tempo. Uh, we're also just trying to um, engage a little bit higher up the pitch as well. Again, with the power and the pace and the physicality of those front four, we should be able to win it a little bit higher up. So how has it gone so far? Really mixed bag. Really, really mixed bag. As you can see, we started off against Colorado. Uh, Pookie got a first half brace and then they came back and equalized in the, 40, uh, the 94th minute, unfortunately. We then played Chicago. 1-1-0, uh, one, one, but Mangala and Smeltzer both got sent off. Yeah, we used to have Smeltzer. He came in, he stunk the place out, and that, well, smelt the place out probably is a better word to use, and then we sent him back in. Uh, but we won 1-0, uh, but with two sending off, so we're very lucky to get that win. We then played Orlando City, who in the past has been a very good side. Yanazai getting a goal, and then also Dijan getting a brace as well. And then Montreal, and we're thinking here... Uh, after a 2-1 win against Montreal, this is easy. You know, we're flying here. And then we get some reality checks and some bloody weird games. We played the New York Red Bulls away from home. Um, we went 1-0 up with a Bissoli goal. They then equalized. Then Ashley Fletcher, the old school Ashley Fletcher, scored a penalty. Doffo, um, oh no, they scored a third. And after 22 minutes, um, five goals has been scored. And I thought we'll get back into this. But unfortunately... We did not. We lost 4-2 to the New York Red Bulls. And then we played Vancouver. I feel we need to watch a little bit of this. So the Vancouver game was very, very strange. It was full of goals. Pookie opened the goals with a lovely ball from Kennedy. And it was after three minutes, 1-0 up. It then kind of went a little bit quiet. They then equalized on the 23rd minute with a fantastic ball through. And our def uh, defender just not waking up we didn't have mangala we had mangala's been a suspended or injured for the last uh two three games and i think we've seen a massive dip in that back line uh without it um then we get a nice little play here lovely little footwork from yanazai and doffer on the edge of the box with uh, dijan scoring making that 2-2 two -two. they then win the ball back and again before half time it's 3-2 and we think, right, let's just get into halftime and see what we can do. But a late attack, a lovely ball over the top. Kennedy then pulls it back. And Doffo kind of scrambles it in. And we do quite well with that as well. So it's free all at halftime. We think, okay, let's just tighten up. Let's just calm ourselves down. But no, massively wide open. And a beautiful goal by Gold there, uh, making it to 4 3. We then equalize with a lovely free kick from Yanazai. Puki puts us 5 4 up. After 56 minutes with a lovely prodded through goal. But that's nothing. They then score three on the bounce to put it out of reach. Giving them a 7-5 lead. A 7-5 lead with just goals after goals. And again, it's just a def terrible defensive line. And awful goalkeeping is a mix of this. Uh, and this is the last one. A long ball up. We miss the first header. They get it down. And then the defender just the wrong side of the striker. But on the 86th minute, we decide... That, actually, we're going to give this a go. Puki uh, is found with a lovely ball by Kennedy to Almeida. And then beautifully in space, he picks the ball up, puts it on the spot. In the 89th minute, we miss the first header. But Almeida picks it up into Sonny. Puki, And then Dijan smashes it. And I think that's it. Beautiful. 7 all. And in the 92nd minute, he scores. I like how... How? Literally how? As you can see, we had 14 shots on target. An XG of 2.92. They had 10 on target. An XG of 2.29. Not a day to remember for the goalkeepers. Our goalkeeper played a 5.9. Theirs played a 6.5. Um, two players getting a hat-trick. Puki and their striker too. But, I mean, it was not a bad game. But it was a terrible game. <laughs> it's a game that I'd like to have won. Anyway, we then played into Miami. Pookie opened the scoring quite early on. They scored with a penalty quite late on in the 82nd minute. We then lost 5-0 to Toronto. Again, Mangala still injured, still leaking goals at the back, still playing like <laughs> Then we played DC United, Rain Rooney's old side. We were playing pretty ropey. And then in the 57th minute, Kennedy, Kennedy just decides to go through the back of somebody. I don't know why. Adnan Yanazai then scored on the 63rd minute. 
And then Pookie scored on a 66 minute to give us a 2 0 lead and sends us sixth in the uh, Eastern Conference and currently in the playoff positions. We're not too far off the top. We are, we've got a game in hand on a few teams around us. Philadelphia do have a few games on hand on us. And that's who we play next, I believe. Oh, shortly, very shortly. Uh, but yes, that's kind of where we're at. It's looking like it's going to be a hell of a challenge. I think we've got a very good 11. I'm very happy with the 11. The minute we get suspensions, injuries or whatnot, we just seem to really, really struggle. Like I said, though, this is streamed over on Twitch every single day. You can also catch up with the uh, podcast, the Dupe Scoop podcast, which is available on all good platforms. The links to all of this is down in the description. So please, please go check it out. There'll also be some updates on here. You'll be able to come and follow on the YouTube where we do some updates and maybe the odd special live com. But if this is something that you would like to give a go, you can do by clicking the link in the description. Crikey. Spend some time in the description, basically. Uh, and there's a zip file there, which will give you everything that you need to get on. If you are doing it, please, please let me know. Let me know in the comments and keep me informed of how you're getting on. But until next time, peace out. Much love. Enjoy the rest of your day. And we'll speak to you all very, very soon. Goodbye.